So I purchased a 2005 Volvo XC90 T6 with less than 110,000 miles. It was not running. I paid a very good price on this vehicle, less than 800 bucks. Had a very clean exterior, interior, no rips, clean title. The symptoms are this engine would crank but not run. Here's a few things that I checked and it sounded very funny when it was cranking. So watch this video. This is just a reference for anybody listening to a uh, maybe timing belt or a, a timing problem, whether you have a broken timing belt or you have compression problems. When you have compression problems, the engine ends up speeding up more. If you have a broken timing belt, your valves are going to be stuck open. In some cases, it's going to hit the valves. It's going to cause compression timing. But even if the valve is stuck open, it's not hitting the piston, you're going to hear the difference in the uh, when you're cranking. I'm going to crank it. This is normal compression. This is what you're going to hear with normal compression. So you can really hear it. If you count five seconds, you da, 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 da. What you do is you compare that to this, what I'm about to show you. Now this is what this is what you're going to hear when you have no compression or open valves or uh, your timing's wrong, your timing belt broke, your timing chain broke, or you have bad compression on your engine. You can see the difference of crank. You hear how fast it is? It's about double the time. Basically pause this video at your leisure if you need to look at something But basically the next things I had to check was the timing marks They were on point and then I did a compression check and you can see my readings when I did the uh, dry test there And uh, that's how I knew that this motor is shot the head needs to come off So basically what you need to do first is start removing all of the coils electrical connectors uh, and You want to remove uh, all the intake tubing there um, get that all aside first, okay? Then next, after you do that, you want to start working your way to the intake manifold. Let's get this fuel rail off here. Let's go ahead and get this clip. Be sure to use two fingers and pull the fuel rail up and out. There's some vacuum lines running to the intake manifold. If they're worn out or brittle, just rip them off. You get new ones anyway. Next, you want to loosen, but don't remove the intake manifold bolts. We're going to need the intake manifold on the head so we can wiggle it out once we get the head bolts out. Next, you want to start by basically, you know, removing the uh, things in yellow there, such as the uh, engine mount, uh, both uh, covers for the uh, cam sensors. Next, you want to remove all of your belts. Um, it's very tricky when you're working in the car. I was lucky this engine at the junkyard was just waiting for me. Everything in the yellow are things you need to remove to take that plastic cover off in the back which is the rear timing cover don't crack that because I did next you want to start removing some of the stuff from the exhaust side so let's get some of these other pipings off O2 sensors come off different kinds of vacuum connections have to come off then you have to try to remove the exhaust shields they are difficult there's no space back there engines in the car just yank them off any way you can here I'm showing you uh, now you have to unbolt the headers from the head. These are very difficult, especially uh, everything in yellow there you see. Those are the most difficult bolts to get. That turbo on the farthest side of the motor, which is the driver's side in the United States, is the worst. All those bolts there are very difficult to get those header bolts off. So you have to use different extensions. I even had to remove uh, this oil feed line just to get more wiggle room. Be sure not to lose those copper gaskets there, those O-rings. Okay, the most hardest part about this process though, in my opinion, is removing that oil return line from the passenger side or, you know, the nearest or the front side of the motor there. That was the worst. I had to use a ton of swivels, extensions, and get under the car, get dirty. Next, remove the cam cover. Start from the farthest side of the motor, work your way inwards. Go cross, crisscross pattern there. Once you remove all those bolts out, you can pull the cam cover up. The camshafts will either come off with the cam cover or they will stay on the head. You have to make a choice because if you drop those, you ruin the cam bearing journals, period. After that, you want to inspect everything. Look at my head. It's very gunky. There was a definite big problem going on here. 
It shouldn't be this dirty at all. This is a big sign of neglect. Someone did not change the oil. This should never run this dirty, even for a European car. Okay, so the next things we have to do is uh, remove some more items. Be careful, I broke my uh, brake booster uh, valve there, but I got another one at the junkyard. Let's get these head bolts off. They're very tough. They're on there at about 300 foot pounds probably. You have to go at a crisscross pattern, starting from the outside, work your way inner. You know, you might even need two people to break this off. Use a cheater bar. Put a big pipe over your half-inch drive ratchet there, or your, you know, your, uh, you know, torque wrench or breaker bar, whatever you're using. Look at this lady. That's how she's getting those lug nuts off. That's how you're gonna get this head bolt off because it's on there, very tight. Believe me. Now, the next thing you want to do is pull the head off. I use a pry bar to basically push those turbo headers off of the head so that I can leave the turbos in the vehicle. Stand the head up but be careful. Do not stand it vertically otherwise all of the lifters will come out and you'll be screwed. Look at this head. This was from the junkyard. Look at the cylinders inside. They look good to me. Now I'm comparing my head with the junkyard head. My head is the very front one and the junkyard is the one in the rear. Now you want to compare the casting numbers. Compare all the ports. Make sure they match. If they're pretty much similar, they're pretty much good to go, I think. Next, you want to go ahead and have this re rebuilt. Send it out to a machine shop. Okay, now here's a video of my reaction when I removed the head off my vehicle. One's good, two's good. Let's get three. There's three. Three looks good. This is just water. There's four. Four looks awesome. Yeah, let's get five and six. Five so far looks good. Let's get six. Looks good too. So, that's my conclusion about this one. About the turbos. Let's see here. I don't think there's any more. This one's seated. This one's completely seated. 
Look at the oil. Oh man, this is completely seized. Ooh. Damn, I'm cutty. This one needs rebuilds. Both of these need rebuilds. Look at the heat. Look at how hot they got. Oh boy, that's it. I fucked this one up here. And this one. I need a new one of these. I need a new one of these that goes on through here. This is gonna be So, to conclude this whole story, guys, the reason why this motor failed, didn't want to start, low compression, one thing owner neglect. Failed to change the oil on time. Failed to check the level of the oil. Maybe it had no oil to begin with. I look at turbo shafts, they're snapped. That's oil, lack of oil there, okay? When I look at the camshaft bearing lobes and the camshaft bearing journals, they're worn. That means there was no oil there. So, I'm going to have to remove these turbos, you guys. And that's the most difficult thing I'm telling you right now. Uh, you have to use a whole bunch of special tools. Here's a list. You can pause it if you want. But I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to have to start by removing this oil feed uh, tube that comes from um, both turbos there, 14 millimeter socket. Then you want to go ahead and remove the uh, uh, water uh, feed and return lines from the back of the turbo that uses a T50 torque socket. Look at this guys, I couldn't even fit a ratchet behind there. I have to use an 8 millimeter open end wrench over my torque socket and use that to turn the damn uh, banjo bolt off. Here I'm removing the, the banjo bolt and the connection. Do not lose that copper o-ring. Take off various vacuum lines from your wastegate. The most difficult part of this whole operation, you guys, I kid you not, is taking off that oil return line from uh, the turbo that's at the frontmost part of the engine, the passenger side turbo in the United States. That's the most difficult one because it has a transmission right underneath there and there's no space to put your extensions and swivels to get to those uh, T25 Torx bolts. Here I am basically dismantling the turbo. Um, I'm trying to get that metal, that center portion out, which is called a cartridge. Um, to do that, you first have to remove the linkages that go to the uh, wastegate flapper there. And um, after that, you know, you can separate the two. As you can see, the turbine just snapped right off of there. Uh, it's gone, basically. Uh, not supposed to do that, it's supposed to still be there. Uh, if you look closely here at the turbine housing, you can see some uh, wear marks there, some gouges. That's from the turbine just rattling. You know, after it snapped off the shaft, it basically was rattling because this person kept driving the, gun, uh, the car like an idiot. They didn't see the smoke coming out from the tailpipe. They probably thought it was a PCV valve or something, you know, and was wondering why he had no power. Now this is how you, you know get the housing off. First, you take a uh, eight millimeter open wrench, uh, wrench uh, get that bolt off the V band, and uh, get the V band off. Then after that, you want to take uh, some penetrating fluid, spray it uh, in the uh, the groove there. Take a flathead and uh, just basically tap it very lightly all around until it separates. And look at that! That turbine just came right off of there, guys. It's not supposed to do that at all. Um, that is awful, man. Uh, yeah, these turbos are done. Um, I'm taking these all apart. Uh, the compressor housing, which is the silver part, uh, comes off by compressing the uh, C-clip that you see there. Uh, it's a very, very big C-clamp, so you need to get a very, very big C-clamp plier. I suggest going to Harbor Freight or something and ordering one uh, right away. Uh, I'm going to compare, uh, this is the rear turbo uh, or the driver's side turbo. Um, the compressor is still good on that one, but the compressor on the passenger side one is basically done. Uh, the nut has came off there, and um, it's long gone. It's probably stuck in the intercooler somewhere. I don't care as long as I don't get into the motor.